uh, pit, pit, uh, yeah, we got so the Wandsworth Demons. All right, we are very close to getting underway here. The AFL Europe 2024 Champions League Grand Final for the men's between the Wandsworth Demons and the Leaside Lions. UK, or I should say, sort of neighbours here geographically, but they won't be too friendly on the field, I can tell you that much. Both teams had hard-fought wins to get through here to the grand final. It's an extremely hard thing to do here. 14 teams coming to the Champions League and now only two remain here in the grand final. And we've got right. We've got, uh, got the teams going to their final huddles now as they prepare to step out. As the Lions run out through their, their Lays team with support there, the Leaside Lions. Shaking hands with officials, one. umpire Walter and umpire Matty, both good Stuttgart men. One. Stuttgart Giants well represented here in the Champions League despite not qualifying. Lucas, men's final on yeah. a hot Leon afternoon. Ridiculously hot, but ridiculously beautiful here in Leon. Blue skies, no wind at all the whole day. No. So it's been great conditions for kicking. So I'm really excited to see... What we, what we have here in this grand final. These two teams, they kick long bombs, so I'm sure oh, we'll see a few goals. I have seen some kicks that would make you think that it's quite windy here today, yeah. but... Uh. <laughs> have been a few misses uh, in the semis there. There are a few behinds kicked that probably shouldn't have been behinds, but here we are, the two best teams at the end of the championship here, at the end of the tournament, 24 minutes away to discover who will be our 2024 champion as well, Oppo Walter hoisted it off. And the Demons get almost first tap at it, but the Lions have got the front work here. Oh, they need to talk it out amongst themselves. They want to show who is going for it. As the Demons apply the pressure here, try to get through, and that's been taken over the line out of bounds. Bit of a nervous start from the Leaside Lions. First final for them at Champions League level. See if they can uh, get behind the ball a bit and make an impact here early. Absolutely. And they seem ready for it as well. They seem like they're real keen. They say a little bit of a nervous start. Demons Ruckman gets that tip, tip off there. Lions are there at the front, but the Demons... Have run through, good hands over the top. Another handball chain, number seven now gets a kick away and that has gone wide and that has gone out of bounds on the full. And that was the Demons number 47, Jonathan Harvey going hard at the ball there as a small forward, um, really making his stamp on the game early. Actually, and that was a behind there. That was behind. So the opening score of the grand final is behind for the Demons. Now we've seen on this size ground, the huddle's there. They really got out into the middle of the ground with that kick in and almost the mark there by 33. But the Demons are tracking that. But the Lions do have the out number, but well tackled by the Demons. Now they've got the number out the back. Caught in a tackle there. But 47 again with the ball. Has another shot at goal. And that has gone through. No, that is a behind there. Just clipped the top of the imaginary post, I reckon. Big screen from the bench there. They thought it went through, but goal umpire right on the spot. Absolutely. Best position that she could be. So two behinds to open up this grand final for the Demons. 
as the Lions are looking to try to get this past the halfway mark. They haven't yet gone into their half. Long. Nice kick out there, straight up to halfway. Big contest in the middle, and the Demons come out with it. Yep, and straight to the full forward who comes streaming out. Oh, he's gone for the hands over number 188. Oh, he's had to do a bit of a duck and a weave. Kicks towards goal, and he has kicked it first. Unselfish play there by 68 there, Ryan. Mate, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you call that fantastic play in the grand uh, final. Unselfish, unselfish. Sorry, unselfish, not but for the team, maybe it would have been better to hold on to it and have a go. But um, it was a good good movement of the ball out of the middle by the captain, Braden Irving, number seven, out on the wing, which allowed the ball to come forward for the Demons and create that shot. And it was really smart from their full forward. He knew what was coming. He was on the lead. You know, He was 20 metres away from his direct opponent by that point. He knew what was happening, and he got in the right spot. Now one goal, two for the Demons leading yet to score the Lions. As the ball goes up, the Lions get the tap down straight to number 77 there, but it's all wrapped up, and umpire Walter will, will call for it again. As up we go, the Lions get the tap over the back, though, to a Demon, and another forward entry there. Off hands, 47 just missing it there. So the Lions come right outside the boot, kick is good, works to a line on the wing. And he's found a man on the arc, and he's taken the mark, number seven. Kevin Jones from the Leeside Lions, a team captain. The backs from the Lions have been having to work hard early in the game, but now it's their chance to get the ball forward, calm the game down a little bit, and have a shot at goal. Absolutely. Number seven comes in for his shot. The captain runs an arc, spins around. That looks good off the boot. What does the goal umpire say? It is a goal. Umpire on the spot calls a goal. Opening score for Lions. Bit of debate on the sideline here, but it's always good having a crowd around the field. Intense Absolutely. atmosphere. There is a lot of people around the field. They've all got their opinion on that one, but most of them are sitting down on the ground and can't really see that well. So I'm just going to say maybe the umpire's in the better spot. <laughs> As the Demons get the tap, there is a, wh oh, there is a whistle on a Falcon. But there is, it is a free kick there for the Demons. Can we just take a second to, to admire the whistle of the umpire, Matty, how... How hard he blows it. It's yeah, great. he's very clear, umpire Matty. Does not hesitate. As the Demons now have a mark at about 40 metres. Number 188 here. Got a perfect look right behind him for this kick. Darcy, He'll kick from about 45. Darcy Cordell lining up for his second of the day. Or his second attempt at least. An interesting three-digit numbers the Demons are rolling with. I wonder if it's a club number. Oh, it's a long kick. It's a straight kick. It is through. No doubt about that one there, Lucas. Straight over the black dot, as you would say, in the rugby terms. But uh, through the sticks, and he takes a well-earned break. Absolutely. Straight to the bench of the high fives of his teammates there. That was a beautiful kick. The absolute perfection of a drop punt that you'd want from about 45 out. Beautiful finish there. Because now the Demons have picked up their, their second goal, I believe. We'll get a score check there on the scoreboard. Yep, they are 2 2 14 to 1 1 7. A couple of subs from both teams now, To uh, now that the initial heat of the game has been taken out. Let's see who can settle earliest, though. Absolutely. It's one goal the difference now, basically 1 1. As the Lions, good hands over the top. He's going to get shut down quickly. He was like a librarian. He never saw him coming. And a bit of a push and shove there from the Demon. As they pump that ball long. Got a demon in the best spot. He had that He had that every day of the week. The use of his body there, just to hold his position and have the, the lee side lines player back into him, pushed him forward a little bit with his big old breast there and yeah. uh, took the mark over his head. As it, it was beautiful. It was textbook, what you want, protect the space, as you say. And now the captain, number seven, can line up for a goal. Braden Irving running in. True drop and true kick. And he's kicked it out <laughs> over almost to Paris. Take just a few to minutes to get that ball back. <laughs> yeah, just to make sure we get a bit of extra rest here between between goals. It is a hot Leon day. Now the Lions midfield just gathering here at the, the centre centre bounce, asking some questions. And number 33 there, laying down the law. He needs some a, a bit more attack out of his, uh, his compatriots there, James Daly, the ruckman. Uh, so let's see if that message has gone through here, the next bounce. 
well attacked, but the Demons do get the clearing kick out, and there is a whistle there um, by Mandy. He's called hold off the ball, and the Demons have the free kick, and he's seen a man free. He's gone for it. Oh, that's a great mark. Not called. Play on. Oh, and then maybe a high the tackle ball. there, and Maddie has called that umpire. Maddie has called the high tackle, and a bit of push and shove. Wouldn't be a grand final in AFL Europe without a bit of push and shove here, Lucas. No, absolutely. A bit of heat still in this game. A bit of one-handed strikes. Umpire reluctant to call any 50s in the uh, heat of the moment. Oh, yes, absolutely. Ooh. Demons get that ball almost on the ground there, but the Lions have the numbers. And a quick clear out to the forward line there. Now it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Well done by the Demon defender there. But the line do, does come away with it. Handball inside. His captain just misses number seven there. And the Demons might get out of jail here as the ball goes down the line and out of bounds. Lions were, only had one man, uh, was Darren O'Dwyer, pretty much inside their forward half, completely alone. And a big, quite a big task on this uh, field to be one-on-one -on -one with your opponent in, in a whole half. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of running to do if you're doing that. Good tap by the Lions. Gets a forward out. Free kick there. I didn't quite catch that from Walter. I think that might have been front on contact. Is that your mate, Joe? Oh, that is my mate, Joe. That is Joe. There we go. We've got Joe's boyfriend here in the crowd as well, I've been told. But Joe, yeah, he's doing well so far in this league. Play on has been called. Number seven, the captain, a low dart. Bullet to the goals. Just off hands into the goal square, but the Demons are good enough. And again, O'Dwyer was alone in the goal square. With only one other compatriot in, his, uh, in the forward 40 there. As now the Demons go forward. It's in their forward 50. Number 88 there, out on the wing, around the corner, trying to kick it in. The bounce has beat everyone, and it's gone through and out of bounds. And we'll have a ball up down there deep in the pocket. So the Leeside Lions look a little bit lost here, still trying to um, work out their defensive structure with the Demons just powering the ball forward. Yeah, the Demons now getting that tap again. Oh, out of the air, the Demon there, but it has clipped the post. Those are behind there. For the Demons. As the Demons are now 3 3 21, leading Wandsworth 1 1 7. So, in the semi final, the Lions took their chances against the Mid Ulster Scorpions, who couldn't convert. But in this game, it looks like they're having a little bit more trouble themselves to convert the chances they're getting. Absolutely. As a torpedo through the middle ends up with the Lions in their forward 50. A tap forward there. And now, number six has a good chance. Just needs to collect again. Boots the ball. Oh, he's hit the post. He has hit the post at the death. The tackle was perfect by the Demons there. I'm not sure which Demon it was. But a, a goal-saving tackle there. Big roar from the crowd. We love a good goal-saving tackle. Absolutely. As now the Demons, a bounce out of half-back, a full-back even, a second bounce. Take a third, young man. No, he kicks it long. Kicked to the 33, but he's taking the eyes off his ball. And now number 13 is taking the mark for the Lions. So Lions play out on the wing all by himself there. See if they can move the ball to him. He spotted him, you're right, right, Ryan. He's got him being there, just taking the mark, and he plays on. Good shepherd from his teammate. Hands forward to number nine. Oh, he wasn't ready for it. Number nine, unfortunately, has dropped it down. Oh, there has been a high free kick given. High free kick given to the Lions on a high bump from the Demons player there. The Lions very lucky there. Again, as we spoke about earlier, not taking their chances. Uh, they were clear out a uh, certain goal, but the fumbly hands but a, a got saved by the umpire. Yeah, they weren't talking there. Number nine had no idea it was coming to him. But as you say, they've gotten out of jail here. And they've now got the shot on goal. Number nine comes in and puts it through. Second goal on the board for the Lions. A slight momentum swing here for the Lions. Let's see if they can keep it up after the ball up in the middle. Absolutely. They seem to be able to find space out in that wing there where they're not being picked up at all by the Demons. As umpire Matty has to do the long run to get the ball. Someone help him out. There we go. As you can see, the crowd building up on the other side now as well as all the other games are finished. No real clear winner from the ruck, but the Demons do come out with the crumb. Oh, my mate Joe off the ground. Straight into the forward line there. Lions 44, the fend-off. He's running the wrong way, though. He's got to get rid of it. Finds number four out on the wing. A very good kick under pressure. Now the Lions look to go down the line. Straight into the forward line, actually. The true centre-half forward. 
punched away by the Demons and a good kick off the ground to get it out of the pressure zone. And now, now the Demons the, can lock it up. Now it's the Demons that look a little bit flustered as the umpire calls a free kick. With Leeside getting a few loose players out in the middle and out in the wings and they're moving the ball a lot easier forward than they were in the first five minutes of the game. Yeah, you're right. If they could just tidy up some of those disposals going forward, they'd have a few marks already inside the arcs. As the buzzer does go for half time, he'll now have to kick for goal. He's easy about 60 out. It's a long kick. It's not bad effort, but it's not going to make the distance. And that'll be the end of the first half here in the men's grand final or 2024 European Championships League. It is Leeside Lions uh, win, leading 3 3 21 to Wandsworth 2 1 13. So it is Wandsworth. We'll just get the scoreboard fixed up. They are swapped around on the scoreboard. So it is Wandsworth leading the Demons there. 3-3-21. Leading Leeside 2-1-13. Just to get that correct on your stream there for you. An eight-point lead so far, the Demons. Ryan, how did you see that first half there? Mate, it was a... <laughs> you call it a half of two halves. Yeah. The uh, the Lions came out in the first final, uh, their first final, and were, you know, they, didn't, they weren't really out in the field. They were behind the ball, they were outnumbered, and the d demons just ran through them. Uh, but about seven or eight minutes through the half, there they got a bit of momentum, had a loose player out in the wing, and they were getting ball forward and and attacking goal very hard. Yeah, absolutely. It seemed like yeah, the demons didn't know what hit them in that last couple of minutes. They they seemed shell shocked after the Lions seemed to be almost be put away the first couple of minutes. They came back strong and the Demons were making mistakes all over the field and, and letting pit players loose as we saw in the forward line there for the Lions. So we'll see if the Lions can bring that momentum through to the next half. They've got 12 minutes now, 12 minutes to try to win this grand final. It is still anyone's game. Eight points, anyone can win it from here. And the Demons have been in this situation before. They've been in multiple Champions League finals and uh, a lot of their players as well are representatives in national teams uh, across Europe and other parts of the world. So the Demons, it's theirs to lose. Uh, and they have the experience to, to see it through. Let's see if the Lions can uh, regroup and continue the momentum push they had in the first half. Absolutely. It's going to be a big first goal. Whoever gets it, it'll set the tone for this half and really either put the Lee side back in it or put Wandsworth well on their way to winning a grand final. Coming up after this, of course, we have the women's grand final. So make sure to stick around for that. Cannot wait for that contest there by reigning champions Cork up against the Glasgow Sharks. That is going to be a beauty of a match. So we're about ready to get back underway here. Umpire Matty with the first ball up responsibility. There goes the buzzer. Another great whistle. Oh, it's a strong whistle by Matty. Can't beat it. Good follow up by the Demons Ruckman. Can't get the hands cleanly to his teammate, but does get out. The quick kick out to the boundary line. And the Demons are still pushing that forward. 47 on the outside of the boots, heads towards goal. Just intercepted by number four, but still in the goal square, still in trouble and off the ground. And it's just gone through for a behind. A missed opportunity there for the Demons. Owen O'Neill there, number four from the Leeside Lions with a goal-saving uh, intercept. Mm, absolutely. And well, did well under pressure right on the goal line to stop that goal going through as well uh, from the soccer. Oh, it's a risky kick and that's intercepted. Undid all his hard work there. Put it right on a platter to number 47. Yeah. The Demons captain. So he'll kick from about oh. 45, 50 metres, I reckon, depending on how far back he kicks from the man of the mark. So, uh, angle of about 40 degrees, maybe. Looks like it's within his reach. He loads up. It's an okay-looking kick. That has gone through for a behind. So two behinds so up the scoring here in the second half. Margin out to 10 points. So still two kicks in the margin as Lee side look to exit now. Deep past halfway. Oh. Bit of mis miscommunication between the back line and the midfield on the Lee side lines. Lee side were running blocks, but the, the guy kicking out just put it out into the space without looking who yeah, was kicking to. Now it's come straight back in. Oh, it's actually gone over for a goal. That has cleared the pack from about 70 metres out and bounced through for a goal. 
unbelievable from the Demons. And a bit of um, yeah, miscommunication there from the Lions defence. Lucas, you said the uh, first goal of the half was going to be important. Is, is that the, uh, the straw that broke the camel's back? It might well be. We've seen three real quick entries here for the Demons. And to have that... No, no. And we've had that long bomb in. So the Demons getting the first goal. They've now got a 16-point advantage. That is quite a mountain to climb in a low-scoring affair this grand final is in the heat of the Leon Sun. And just while the uh, umpire is getting ready to ball up, a uh, big congratulations to Leon for hosting this event. Fantastic day. We're back underway. Yeah, absolutely. As the Demons get the tap down, almost get the crumb. No high given. And we'll have another ball up there. No, it's been an absolutely fantastic day. Every pitch has been immaculate. It's been beautiful. Uh, and a real smooth flowing uh, competition here today. As Maddie gets us back underway, tap out by the Demons. Lions get a tap forward, but it doesn't go anywhere. A Demon cuts it off. They're calling goals for number 14, but he's standing lead that he likes. That is beautiful, unselfish play there by 14. He gives himself a little fist pump, and he deserves it. It's beautiful football. Seeing a big full forward lead out from the square with his hands out in front of him and the ball hitting him lace out. It's no better sight. Absolutely. And, and 14, he didn't, he didn't blaze away. He lowered his eyes, and it was a perfect kick to him. So let's see if they can convert now from about 25, 30 metres out. Only a slight angle. Kick is on its way, and it is through. And there's a goal there for he, the Demons. He points back to his midfielder that put it on his chest. Thanks him for the goal. Yeah, absolute team effort there from the Demons as they start to pull away now, 22-point margin. The line's a little bit quiet. Let's see if there's anybody on their team that can uh, rally the troops and gain that bit of momentum back. Yeah, a spark has to come from someone. Yeah, Ruckman, number 33, has pulled the team on his... Put, put the team on his back earlier in the game. Let's see if he can do it again. Doesn't get the tap, but follows it up, gets possession, but gets tackled immediately by his opposition. As the ball is all tied up and Maddie will go again. So up we go again. This time the Demons win it out. The Lions are still tracking it. Oh, a bit of a, a, bit of a Jack Ginnivan style move, but it works for 14. And the crowd let him know as well that he... <laughs> oh, he's got another kick out to his full forward. 14 has got good connection with his full forward there. Amazing pass. Good vision and good communication. The full forward called the short, small forward out of it. And there was the trust and communication there between the Demons. And it's resulted in this mark at about 30 metres out for another set shot on goal. And the uh, Lee side Lions, number 33, just checking with the umpire about the, <laughs> the lowering of the shoulder. Yeah. As the Demons convert another goal. Their full forwards kick two in a row. And again, a, off the back of, the, of number 14 in the middle. Yeah, Zane Martin delivering that ball up to uh, Braden Irving. And you know, his uh, goal-kicking skills are on show today. Absolutely. I read in the chat earlier that I should have known Irving's name and that he would be disappointed that I didn't and that I wasn't calling it. Now I know it. Now I will. <laughs> As the Rucks go at it, the Lions do get the win. But Demons are getting the crumbs. And they get the quick hands out wide. It is still a contest, though. The Lions are doing well to track that to the boundary line and into the fence. And we'll have a ball up. As the Demons now with a 32-point advantage. Scores 6-5-41 to 2-1-13. As a long shot of goal, just wide for a behind. Edward Mobley. Having a spray from uh, about 45, 50 out. Yeah. And you see the Demons, they're not content with where they're at. They want to still push hard, and they're calling for the man up in the zones as they look to defend this kick out, and that goes out of bounds, and that'll be a free kick to the Demons. Now the Lions now have to uh, chance their arm, and some of those players are going to end up like that, but it's what they have to try. Good kick down to number seven, the full forward again, Mr. Irving. And he's pointed straight at the goals. He's got about a 60-meter kick ahead of him, I would think. If that's a 35-meter line, gets out to 45 with the mark. No kick from at least 50-55, I reckon. This task is a this kick is a task in any conditions, but after playing five or six games, it's a good-looking kick. It's a long kick. It's just sprayed wide. Had the distance. Behind. Got a good leg on him. Yeah, that was no trouble. The distance at all.
as the Lions need to start getting some connection out of their back line into the midfield for these kickouts because they're just spraying it down the line. And the mark has been called for the Demons. And a sweeping handball to the centre. And a switch kick out wide. It's worked well for the Demons. And now it's a long kick down to the forward line. They seen the forward, almost got him, but a good, good spoil there. Ball kept in play and the kick back down the line, back to whence it came. Almost a mark there by the Demons. The crumb and trying to get through, but the tackle is good and the umpire has called holding the ball. Well, it's good to see the Lions aren't giving up here. They're still giving it their all, all the way into the final whistle. Absolutely. As the ball goes deep in the forward line, oh, it's well defended there by the Demons, streaming out of the back line. Oh, yeah, they've got a man free. Fortunately, he couldn't get to him. It trickles out of bounds because number seven is all on his own back there in the forward line. I don't know what's happening here. Oh, now there's a man manning him up. 21 has realized what's happening. 91 from the from the Demons in the back line, that intercept mark. He was doing it all day and uh, very good reason to how they got to the semifinal with locking up with those earlier games. Absolutely. So Lions look to go forward and a good mark taken there. The double Commentator's grabber. curse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you pumped him up and now he's let slip this mark there which he probably should have spoiled over the line now 27 can go back and have a shot from about 35 40. As the kick goes in it's wide it's not going to make it it's punched through for a behind there well done by the demons defense as it's now 6 7 43 wandsworth to 2 2 14 lee side 29 point lead 29 point lead here to the Demons. It's a five goal deficit. Hard to come back from at this rate as the Demons get it all the way back to their half forward. Long kick in. He's got two plays streaming back to goal. Can they work out? Can the bounce be kind? It can be. And number 19 finishes it off. Could have ruffled it between them but 19 finishes the job off from a great kick in. It looked as though he was trying to wheel it over the line to not steal the goal but with it bouncing up at the last second he took matters into his own hands. Absolutely. Made a certainty of it. I don't think anyone could complain about that. Not bad having a goal in your grand final either. Yeah, exactly right. Now out to a 35-point lead here for the Demons. And the Lions shouldn't be disheartened. They had a fantastic... Warning for the 3-3-3 three, three, three rule here. The Lions having, uh, have had a fantastic day, had some really good wins, so they should be proud of their, their effort, even uh, in this losing match. Absolutely. Still to, become, to be second in all of Europe, it's not a bad effort. So the Lions are trying to get this ball happening, but it's just over the boundary line and it'll be a ball up. With the boundary in the arc there for the forward half, the Leafside Lions. The Demons in no hurry to retrieve that ball knowing they've got the ascendancy and they've got the time. Good tap out there by the Demons. Oh, but a good tackle. That will be holding the ball, and that'll be a free kick. Well tackled there by the Lions. Number 33 getting the rewards. It's number three. He's going to kick from about 35. Slight angle. Sets it sail for home, and he's kicked it. Well done, young man. Number 33, reducing the deficit back to 29. Fantastic kick by James Daly coming off the back of the tackle as well. As we said earlier, he has been the motivation for this team. He's put it on his, the team on his back twice to try and pull them out of this hole. A little bit late this time around, but fantastic effort. And so he has not stopped trying there in the ruck with second and third efforts every time. Good tackles there by the Lions trying to get that ball out, but the Demons do extricate it. And a bounce through the midfield. And a whistle has been blown. Whistle has been blown there. And there was a downfield free kick. As a Demons player got a bit of a cramp there. But there will be, will be a free kick down the field. So 188 can have a set shot of goal rather than a flying on the run shot. Darcy Cordell lining up from about uh, 45 out from goal. His forwards are leading out to him still at this stage of the game. It's fantastic to see. Absolutely. They want a goal as well. 
It's a good high kick. It's a long kick. It is a straight kick. I think. No, it's not. Must have just clipped the post on the way through. So it's a behind there, creeping the margin back out to 30 points for the Demons. As the Lions are looking to get out of their defensive zone again. Go straight through the middle, down the line. Quickest way to do it. And he gets to their half forward. He snaps it in. He's seen number seven all on his own. The mark has been taken. I don't know if the umpire will give him the shot. No, no mark. The, the siren went before the mark. And there you have it. The Wandsworth Demons are the 2024 European AFL Champions League champions. Winning 7-8-50 to 2-3-15 over the Leaside Lions. Congratulations, Leaside Lions, for getting this far. Commiserations. But, of course, congratulations on getting the second place. And, of course, immense congratulations to the Wandsworth Demons. Champions of the Champions League 2024. All right, and that was uh, a bit more of a blowout, I think, than we were expecting. Wandsworth just ran away with that in the second half in the end. Yeah, mate, it is a difficult thing playing a grand final after playing five or six intense matches throughout the day. Uh, you know, the semi-finals, as we spoke about a bit earlier, they really take it out of you this late in the day and then do kind of back up to a grand final against quality opposition. Um, it's, it is a, a big task, but I think both teams did extremely well and Leeside should be proud of their effort. And they were in it until quite, quite a way into the game. And there were moments and flashes of, of glory from them, especially their Ruckman number 33. And, um, yeah, just couldn't get there in the end. Yeah, absolutely. It's, they've been playing since 9 a.m. this morning. You know, it's almost eight hours of footy. Uh, it's, it's a lot. You know, you do get breaks in between here and there, but as I said, it's, it's a lot of rough, hard games. Everyone wants to be the champions, so it's hard to get here. And well done to both teams for getting here. And, again, congratulations to Wandsworth Demons. And we'll be back shortly with the women's grand final.
So we're about to get underway here for the Women's 2024 AFL Europe Champions League Grand Final. It is the defending back-to-back -back champions, the Cork Vikings versus the Glasgow Sharks. This will be a tight contest, absolutely. As the Vikings get the first tap out, but the Sharks are at the ball. Kedis, quick kick out to the middle, but there's no one home for the Sharks. Although 24 has raced in there. She's gotten there first, almost gotten the ball, and it has gone. I think that has been a whistle called and has been called uh, kicking in danger there. So the Sharks come away with the free kick. As they go down the line, good kick there to 43, who has been probably the player of the tournament for the Sharks. I've seen her in the two games I've seen the Sharks play. She's been in pretty much every play as 43. And goes down the forward line, almost a mark there with number eight. 27 there, the big full forward, trying to get it out to her. But the numbers are with the Vikings as they look to get it out of their defense. Quick hands. Oh, but he's holding the ball. Incorrect disposal there. And it will be a free kick to the Sharks. So it will be a great shot on goal here for the Sharks. Number 11. Tip of the goal square directly in front. Kate Wiley with the ball in her hands. Prepared to uh, slot through for the first goal of the game. And she's got it. And she's happy with that, as are the rest of her team. Sharks take the early lead. An interesting uh, positional uh, play here from the Sharks. Number 27, the tall blonde that's in the forward line now for the Sharks. She spent most of the day in the ruck. Now yep. he's coming out of the forward line. Yeah, I did notice that. Yeah, and she's, she's offering that target. It looks like they thought they could use her height in the forward line. She stands almost a head taller than everyone else down there. Nothing wrong with number 25 in the ruck. She did a great effort there. No, she, she the did really well in the semis as well. But that was a great kick from the Vikings. They found their play on the lead, number 15. Right on the 35-meter arc. Shannon Stevenson. She was one of the standout players of the tournament last year and looks like repeating her performance this year. Now she comes in, gets close to the man on the mark. It's a high kick. It's a long kick. It's not going to make it. Good tap down there from the Sharks. Defense trying to get that ball out, but the Vikings are onto it. And it's all wrapped up there, about 20 metres from goal. So the Sharks with the early goal in this match. Annie Walsh, number six there from the Cork Vikings, another standout performer for the team, was making massive inroads earlier in the day. Well, as 15 gets a quick kick out. She's kicked a goal. Shannon Stevenson, I told you about her about oh. three minutes ago. I hope you were listening. I was, Ryan. You've called it. And she's kicked it out of the pack. It was just picked up beautifully down there and snapped it on the left. A very difficult shot. And it's all square here in the grand final. One goal apiece. And the Sharks continuing with uh, number 27, the Ellie Hancock. Well, there's two 27s in the team, so I'm not really sure which is which, but... <laughs> Hopefully only one twenty-seven is playing. Louise Brett into the ruck. All right, well, Brent, there we go in the forward line. Uh, sorry, in the ruck there. One hundred three for the for the cork for the cork girl. She's trying to get it out. Now it's a scrap on the ground. Eighteen dusk. Oh, it is a throw. It is a scoop throw. Well spotted by the umpire. Right on the spot there he was. Mm. No hesitation about it either. So it'll be a sharks free kick in the middle. I think this twenty-seven is Ellie Hancock. Uh -huh. If I was to guess. And you see the big forward making a run now. The forwards making their leads. Good communication, good talk, and a good crash of the pack, almost taking the mark. Brave there from the Cork defenders. Getting the handball. It is a, it is a throw there. The one-handed handball gets you every time. So it will be a free kick to the Sharks. And that's just come out of their defense as well. The forward pressure from the Sharks. We've seen that all day creating those errors from their opposition. Absolutely. Two or three Sharks went in for that tackle, and the third eventually got her. As the kick, the interesting approach, the one-handed drop. Cork defence just trickled that over the line, and it will be a ball up deep in the Sharks' attacking pocket. No deliberate rush behinds in this game, so it would have been well within a right there to take it through the point and try and get the ball back, but it's absolutely. taking it out. Absolutely. I feel more players should be doing that in our leagues. They're not too sure on it, but they should be taking the safety when it's there. But the Sharks get the tap down there. It's in the danger zone. No one seems to want to grab it. The Cork Vikings do get a handball out. It's come out to the boundary, almost out to the arc. A good snap around the corner by the Vikings to get that cleared back in the centre, and 13 can run onto it. Almost sandwiched by two Sharks, but she gets a kick away. It's down to the other end of the square. But the Sharks do have the numbers and should come away. 27 has come a long way from home to get this ball and gets dragged down. As number nine, who has fought hard all day for the Sharks, is trying to muscle out a much larger opponent. The Cork Vikings do come away with it. Oh, a bit of a dance and a weave for number 80 and a, and a hook kick 
trying to find her player coming out of the forward line. I think that's, that's number 15, Shannon, again. A long kick from the arc. That's going to go wide, and that's going to be a behind, giving them the slight lead. And Cork really getting their handball play through the middle working. The Irish background, uh, Irish uh, Gaelic background with the handballing coming through here. Yeah, absolutely. There's a good chain of handballs and little kicks out from the midfield there. So the Sharks now looking to break the zone, get their leading place. Oh, they've overcooked that one. That's gone straight to the opposition. Annie Walsh. She's one of the leaders of this cork pack. She's found a player out wide, number 80. Just intercepted there by the Sharks. Well done, number 11 again, getting involved and putting a shepherd on. The don't argue. Oh, it's come, out, come apart. The don't argue has failed there. Number 24 court, number 18 for the Vikings. Now as a shot at about 25, 30 metres out. And that's Marie Keating for the Cork Vikings, uh, one of the co-captains of the team, together with Shannon Stevenson at the forward. She'll kick from about 35. Oh, what is that? That's 25 oh. metres. I don't know what number 11 was doing there, but it's a 25 metre penalty. I'm not sure where 18's going. It's only 25 metres, not directly to the goal line. Not too sure what happened there. That was very bizarre. I think she was trying to put her off her, her run in and uh, maybe worked a little bit too well and she thought she, the player had played on and went to attack her but yeah. the umpire hadn't called it play on so yet. So now 18, a lot closer now. The co-captain there slots it home for their second. The Cork Vikings take a seven-point lead. Yeah, Marie Keating taking a, converting the chance that they were given from the Glasgow Sharks there. Little mistakes like that can be costly in grand finals. The Sharks will want to tighten those up. Ellie Hancock out for a break and just come back onto the field now. Hopefully we'll play the rest of the half for the Sharks. Yep, 27 there with the white nose. Protection against the sun. I like it. Neither Ruckman really wins it out, but it goes Cork's way. A great tackle by Ellie Hancock. Oh, she still gets through the Cork. The Cork Viking there, but a fantastic mark there from the fullback. That was a great contested mark in the back line there. Something that the Glasgow Sharks need right now in this game to wrestle back some momentum. Not too sure where to go to now. She's got nothing she really likes. Play on has been called. Oh, no, smothered off the boot. And now she's in trouble here. Number 15, Shannon, can't get the kick away. Oh, as the fullback twists and turns. Sold everyone candy there. Yeah, everyone sort of stopped, and she went away with it and kicked the ball out to the wing. So out of jail there for the Sharks. Yeah, they were lucky to get out of that one. Normally, Shannon Stevenson will take advantage of those uh, mistakes in the forward line and convert. This time, she couldn't do it. The ball goes up then. Cork does get the win. Ella Hancock just missed the ball there, but she follows it up. Good collect, but can't get out of that. Tackle by number 80 there for the, for the Vikings doing good work. Oh. Not sure what happened there. It is a free kick to the Sharks. It was a block out. I think the, uh, the opposition, they didn't realise she was going to be the Ruckman. They started trying to defend against her, which you can't do in a Ruck contest. As the ball goes down to the other 27 down there in the forward line, just misses her. She's still fighting hard and does end up getting the ball, gets dragged down. Play on is called number nine for the Sharks has run through. She's kicked towards goal. That has just gone through for a behind. So one number straight kick in it now. Number nine from the Sharks. Um, I'll let you pronounce that name. Uh, oh, off, off Leith McCowie. McCowie. <laughs> I, Probably I, one of the smallest I players apologize. on the field, but the longest yeah. names. Exactly right. But she's been just a, a workhorse today in the midfield, in attack, wherever she's needed. She's never given up. And a throw has been called here, so here's a Sharks free kick over on, near the boundary on the arc. It is Ellie Hancock there, I think, who's, it's her kick. And one of the indeed. dangers, Lucas, of these, uh, the Gaelic skills coming through is the palm handball, which umpires can sometimes mistake for a, a throw. Yeah. A throw. And she puts it deep into the forward. Oh, it's bounced over everyone. That's gone through for a goal. Ellie Hancock has bounced it past everyone. Claims have touched. The umpires already called a goal. I'm not too sure what's going to happen here. They will confer here, the umpires, but they've given the all clear, and that is a goal. Ellie Hancock kicking the goal there. That's massive for the Sharks. That is huge. Well-deserved yeah. goal. I know they've been pushing for the last couple of minutes and they got the rewards there and we're all tied up here now, 2-1 apiece.
can't be long left in the half here. Perhaps. See if anybody else can uh, get a score on the board. Sharks do get the tap forward. And 49 does bust through, try to work that ball forward, but she can't, gets wrapped up there. Annie Walsh with the uh, big bear hug. 49 again getting the tap down. Walsh in there for the Vikings. Can't get, can't get, oh, and a high hit there. High hit there, and that will be a free kick. Solid hit. And I can't see which player that is. Starts with a four on her back, I'm not sure. There is definitely no shortage of contact in these women's games here today, Lucas. No, that was brutal. I think that was, four, that was 43 who's been in everything. Just getting whacked front on. She's about 50 metres from goal, so she'll be looking for a leading player. Tall 27 is not in the forward line, so they've got a lot of shorts that are going to be running leads. The ball goes long. A good, strong mark by the fullback there for the Vikings. And she's seen a lead out in the wing. The co-captain there, Walsh, almost got the mark. Free kick has been paid for a high. Marie Keating there getting the ball out in the wing, the free kick. Getting called around by the umpire. Giving her teammates a chance to push forward. And it's a good kick place. for 15, Shannon. And she plays on immediately. She sees the goals ahead of her. Oh, she got caught. Hans didn't quite get the number nine. She's struggling through there as well. Cork have got the numbers. They've got a kick. And number 80. Oh, it's oh. just gone. Just gone narrow. That was a fantastic effort. Unfortunately, Cork couldn't get the result there. But they lead it now by the solitary point. The crowd were willing that ball inside the post there. But they weren't it, loud enough. It looked beautiful it. off the boot. Unfortunately, just narrow. But a lot of forward pressure there from the Vikings. Well defended by the Sharks, but just that effort there from the Vikings to, to keep pushing that ball forward. Kiara Corbett, number 80 there. As the siren goes, so the Vikings will take the slenderest of margins into half time. One point lead is here in the grand final for the Champions League Women's 2024 AFL Europe. Oh, that was an intense con contest there in that first half, Ryan. I mean, I... I knew it'd be tight, but they were going goal for goal there. And again, one point between them. It's, it's basically game on in the second half. Hey, Lucas, it is, for mine, the women's games are always the, the most entertaining. They have the biggest hits, the, uh, the kicks, and just the, the contests from, from all the players are just amazing. And you can see it here today in all the games, but especially in this final. With it is a one point to Cork at the moment. The Vikings are up by one. Getting some some call outs from the from the, the uh, are up by one. from the crowd here. Yeah. As the spectators, yes, spectators yeah, so checking with us on the scores there. But yeah, as they run huge hits in these women's game, it's a, it's a real tight contest. And the, and the, the the players in the teams, there's so many key players uh, looking from on the Cork Vikings, Annie Walsh, and Maria Dw uh, Marie Dwyer in the forward line, and Shannon Stevenson, all getting their hands on the ball all throughout the half and making really really big impacts for their team. And on the Glasgow Sharks side, um, Ellie, Ellie Hancock there, Hancock, 27 to kick that, that last goal uh, for the Sharks. And also 43 as well 43, for the Sharks. She's not amazing. on my team list, but she's doing a great job. Uh, and, and, and 27, the other blonde, long blonde 27 and, in the forward line. And also the short midfield number nine as well. The redhead has been ridiculously yeah. good in all the games I've watched today. Just um, doing fantastic jobs, and they're really pulling their team along, both yeah. all of these star players in their teams, and yeah. well deserved to come into the, this grand final. Absolutely, and it's worth noting the the time these two met in the group stages, it was a draw. So, and the scoreline was not dissimilar to what we have just now. So, we could be in for a very tight match if things progress like that. As Cork look to go for the three peats in the Champions League here, and the Sharks looking to get their maiden championship. And 27 again now. Deep down in the full forward position. And you can see she's got a head on her opponent. This is where they can really take the advantage if they can get the long balls into her. And there's the buzzer for the start of the second half. We have 12 minutes to go with the Champions League 2024. No one can really get clear possession here. Bobbles out to the cork midfielder there, number six. One and three just misses her. Ruckman follows up with a good shove, trying to get her body working in there. Number 11 helping her out for the Sharks. But that ball is not popping out now. I think, oh, no, it is, it is slightly coming out. The, the Ruckman does get it out, 25, doing great work there, as I think that's 43 on the bottom of it. And we're seeing again straight away the intense competition of these teams. The ball doesn't even get out of the centre square. Absolutely. As the Sharks try to get the tap, 
It's going the wrong way for them. But 43 does get the hands. Just misses the Ruckman, unfortunately. Can't hit 25. Hand calc on the bottom there. And they still can't get it out. Yeah, Ellie Hancock, as you say, getting in amongst it once again. Ruckman once again go at it. Early jump from 25 for the Sharks. Ellie Hancock getting the, the loose kick out to the wing. It's going to favour the Sharks player in the end. Bit of a fend off. Can't quite pick it up, and the Cork player does really well to get hands out. Ellie Hancock there getting, getting the ball, getting hands out. Can't quite get that ball, and it is holding the ball. Knocked loose there in the tackle, so it is a cork free kick here on the commentary wing. It's given to Kiara Murphy, CJ, out on the wing looking for a target. Good smother from the Ruckman 25, who has been ridiculous in her effort today. She has just been put, giving her all, and that smother there, just another example of that. Martine McCann there, number 25. McCann then in the Ruck. Good contest there with 103 from Cork. Sharks are there at the front, but they can't collect it. And Cork does end up getting the ball and a quick kick into the forward line. And now for 15, Shannon. She's got the ball. Hand pass it off to number six. Quick kick on the right. Goes towards goal. That has gone through. Quick goal there from Cork after the stoppage. Annie Walsh has won multiple team of the tournaments throughout her tenure in the Cork Vikings and shows why. A fantastic boot. Yeah, absolutely. It was a great finish under pressure and good hands there from Shannon, number 15. Took the tackle and still got the hands to her so she could finish. You can definitely see the teams where they play m multiple games throughout the year together. They have the combinations. They know each where each other are. Typical example there. Absolutely. As the Sharks try to get this, but the Vikings are right onto it and a quick clearing kick into the, into the foil. Almost mark taken there. But Shannon again, number 15, onto the right boot. And she sprayed that wide. And I'm not sure if that's gone through for a score there. Hey, you won't has. see many of those kicks from Shannon Stevenson, but uh, a bit of a spray, but she'll definitely be on to that next one. Absolutely. So now they've extended their lead to eight points here. Sharks taking a bit of time to get it out. And they really need to start scoring. They've only scored... The one goal so far for the match, or the, sorry, the three goals for the match. They've scored none in this second half. They need to start scoring as that ball trickles out, out of bounds. As the ball goes up, Ruckman are competing. Back up Ruckman there for the Sharks. Number nine speeds away with it. A great pickup and a great kick forward to her full forward. Defense, well done to stop that. 27, toe poke it out to the advantage of number 11 there. Number 11 has to have a clean pickup if she wants to get away with this one. Can't quite get there. Number 80 is harassing her there from the Vikings. Number 11 does get over. Number 27 kicks towards goal. She wanted to square it up at the top of the goal square. It's just missed her player. But she is good enough to get there. Number 28 gets there first. A bit of a fend off and a bit of a throw there. And that has been called by the umpire holding the ball. Unlucky there. The Sharks were good to get the ball up and fold it up and towed it along. Trying to get the territorial advantage. Couldn't convert. It's now the cork. Vikings have a free kick in their back line. Again, looking for the co-captain there down the line. Just missing her. And the Sharks do have the out number. They've got a bit of a shepherd there. Off the ball, well done. Number 10 now can pump that ball along. A torpedo. Oh, but a good mark. Fantastic mark there by the Viking in defence. The Vikings is getting a lot of players behind the ball. On a wider shot, you can see that uh, 22 of... I'm oh, sorry, 16 of the 18 players are all in the cork half. Absolutely, yeah. There's only the two, there's only the full forward and the full back there in the shark in the uh, in the corks forward half. Well spoiled over there by the sharks. They've got the out number. Can they work it out? A long kick down to the forward line. They've got the out. They've got the out height, and there is a free kick there. It is called, I think, I think over the over the shoulder maybe. It's a downfield. I oh, think downfield. Here. There you go. So 27 now will have her kick. On a fairly sharp angle, maybe 30 degree angle, but she's only about 20 metres out. Great opportunity here to cut the margin back to just two points. Lines in, comes in for it. And I think that's just missed there. It has. It's gone through for a behind. Let's so see how the team is set up here. If the Sharks want to be aggressive in their defence and how much the Vikings want to run with the ball. All man-on-man -man coverage. 
Oh, and a very wide kick. I think that might go out of bounds on the full. In fact, it does. A little bit too far out for a shot at goal. But the Sharks will have to look for someone. I see there's a lot of space in that pocket there for someone to run into, which there is a full forward going there now. And the Not hot spot that completely lead. open as well. Now it's just gone long to the top of the square. Oh, it's bounced over everyone, but it's... Oh, good tackle there. And, and holding the ball has been called incorrect disposal directly in front of goal. So who is that? Number 11. Who's already kicked a goal, I believe, in this grand final. Kate now Wiley. A, yeah, now lining up for a second. We're right behind her here. Easy. Oh, no, she's pr pushed her left. She has missed. It is now one straight kick, six points the difference. It's 2-3 for the Sharks, 15 versus Cork, 3-3, 21. Good tackle there from the Sharks, and it's holding the ball, and it is play on, no, no advantage there. So I'll have to take her kick back over the mark. And the Sharks' defense really coming in strong here. Yeah, they're not letting out. They seem to be playing well with all the numbers. They say 16 to 18 players are in this half. Hard to get a leading player. Goes wide and high. Just dropped by 24. Can the Sharks get a goal here and wrap things up? Trying to get it out of the Cork Vikings. Clearing kick out to the other side. And there's a sling tackle there. So it will be a free kick to the Vikings. Relieve some pressure there for their defense. Ellie Hancock playing a bit of a sweeper role for the Glasgow Sharks. Trying to get the ball from a stray kick. So Annie Walsh pushing up the ground. You can try and bring her with her. There she goes, Annie Walsh. Oh, good defense there from the Sharks to stop that mark. Now corralling the co-captain there for the Cork Vikings. But she gets a kick right into the middle. There's a free play. If she can get it, she's away. Bounce is not fortunate for her. But the Vikings still come away with it here. And they'll kick that down the line. As Shannon, the full forward, beats her. Oh, she's getting tackled. She gets a kick away, just misses. But that could be a very important point as it's now seven points of difference. Some good pressure from behind there by Wiley. A real great chase down tackle, stop that certain goal. But as I said, it's still a two-kick game. And the Sharks really have to push forward now with speed and with haste as there can't be too much left in this half. Four minutes remaining. Four minutes and they need two goals, do the Sharks. I'm not sure if the fullback knows. She needs to get on with it. Signals to her team. Goes out for 27 on the wide lead. No, it's number nine there. Just dropped the mark, so good enough to play onto it. Kicks it to the forward half. The bounce will tell. It's evading everyone, this ball today. Good push off the ball by the Sharks. Got the handball over. They've now got clear open space. Oh, but she's run down from behind. A fantastic tackle there from the Vikings. Surely a goal-saving tackle with three and a half minutes to go. A lot of the game being played between the arcs here. Ball goes down to the far wing. Good spoil there from the Sharks, but the Vikings, number 103, is good enough to pick it back up. Good intercept there by number 10. Can't quite hang on to it, though. It's hit the deck. Oh, and 80's getting through, and she's caught high. Free kick to the Cork Vikings. If Cara they can get Corbett. a goal here, this might be game. If they can get in there with about three minutes to go. Shannon just dropping the mark there, number 15. Can't quite get to it. As Hancock there, shepherding the ball for her defense. And a clearing kick out, 27 there with the height. Can't get there. And the co-captain there. Marie Keating on the spot. Kick just clears the pack there. Shannon there for Cork, trying to get it. Elise Hancock dragged off the footy. Number 80 spins, turns, gets a kick away on the left boot. That's a behind there. Eight points of difference with under three minutes remaining. A strong effort there by Cara Corbett, number 80 for the Vikings, trying to get through traffic and putting it on the boot. That's the constant a... pressure forward is going to do the... very well for the Vikings. Absolutely. They just need to lock it in now. And the Vikings could be on their way to their third in a row here in the Champions League. Long kick out by the Sharks. It clears the centre line. Lise Hancock has been trying all day. She almost got to that ball. Oh, good tack there by 43. Wrapped her up. Still got the hands away. As the 25, the Ruckman tries to get through. Hancock there. Quick kick around. 43. Quick hands out to the wing. Fend off. Can't get the ball away. And that is holding the ball. Incorrect disposal. And it's another cork free kick. And they're keen to move uh, it forward. Stevenson out on the lead. 42 metres out. Yeah, and she'll know now to take her time. Her, her bench is telling her, relax. Even if she can't make the distance or misses, 
this is time worth taking. We'd be about two minutes remaining now, eight points of difference. If you're the Sharks here, Lucas, what do you do? You just got to go straight down the middle. No more out to the wing to a contest. Go down to the middle. If you're going to win it, you're going to win it here. As they go down the line, out to the wing, it's an out number. But the Sharks have got it out the back now. They need to just keep pushing it forward, which 27 does, gets a little kick out. And it's going to trickle over the boundary. No, it's still in, but the players are setting up on it. No, they're, st they're stealing it right out of her pocket there. And it will be holding the uh, ball up there. And Annie Walsh from the uh, Cork Vikings there was didn't want to get it over the line, but wanted to keep the ball down on the ground as much as she could. Yeah. Now the Sharks need to score here. It's as simple as that. Number nine gets a quick kick around the corner. It's into the pocket. 27 comes out, doesn't get there. And it's a mark called Fantastic for the defensive mark there by the Cork Vikings, number 11. And that might just be a game-saving mark, I think, as we're tricking down to about a minute and a half, I think, now. Eight points of difference. As long as Cork are clever about this, the Sharks now, so that is not clever. That's going to go out of bounds on the full. The Sharks now have to go deep. They have to go straight to the goal square. They need a mark. They need tall 27 down there, and she is down there. They just need to go to her now. Trust, trust in her height against the shorter defense. You need a big pack mark now. Cork have flooded their defense. You just need to find someone. And there is the siren. And Cork has run out winners by eight points here. Cork are three times, three in a row, AFL Europe Champions League champions winning 3-5-23 over Glasgow Sharks, 2-3-15. Ryan, Cork, three in a row. What does that say to you about this club? It's a fantastic achievement. I'm actually getting a bit of goosebumps now just uh, watching them celebrate out on the field. It's a fantastic group of, of ladies that uh, make up the Cork Vikings and have put their all into getting to this tournament multiple times in a row and getting to the final and, and winning. You can see the enjoyment on their faces, just how much it means to them. Absolutely. And you know, we say three in a row, but it's not every player here who played in the last two as well. We play here, this is their first champion as well. So this is a great achievement for a club. It's a, it's a long trip to come you know, from Ireland, from England, from from Germany, from Switzerland, from Sweden to come here to play in the Champions League. And they've done it three times in a row now as, as the women's champions. It's an incredible achievement. It is. And for the Glasgow team that we've seen quite a lot on this field today, uh, put up some fantastic efforts all through the day. As we've spoken about multiple times, it's a very, very tough day of football. And they tried as hard as they could. Uh, and they should be very proud of their, their input here today. Absolutely. Not taking nothing away from the Sharks. They had an impressive tournament and they will go home very proud. Second places here at the Champions League. Well, Lucas, that wraps us up for today. It does indeed. It's been a long day, a fantastic day here in Leon. Again, thank you to our hosts, the Leon Lions here. Uh, it's been a fantastic crowd, uh, fantastic ground, fantastic crowd as the Cork Vikings celebrating here. Once again, thank you to Leon. Thank you to all the AFL Europe sponsors. Thank you to Ryan and his team for the streaming services today. It's been marvellous. Thank you for everyone who watched and commented. It's great sharing this great sport of ours throughout Europe. And uh, we'll, maybe we, I don't know if we're streaming the, uh, the presentations or anything like that. But that wraps us up here today. Again, thank you to everyone involved, Ryan. Do you have anyone you want to thank before we wrap it up? Mate, I'd just like to thank you. Fantastic, oh. <laughs> fantastic day on oh, the maybe. microphone and uh, really taking this stream to another level with having the, the commentary all day. So, uh, it's been uh, my absolute pleasure. Great having you here. And if uh, you're watch still watching the stream and any tips or tricks you wanted to give us for the coming streams in the coming uh, tournaments, let us know in the comments and we'll Look take it Look forward to Euro Cup in Kiel in October. Looking forward to that one, the next big Europe tournament. Yes. Thank you and good day. Cheers.